Right, so uh, let me just go through my checklist of how to make a decent video. One, pick an interesting topic. Well, range testing a Novrich SSG is a pretty good topic. Two, film the video. Yeah, I did that. Three, put out a publicity campaign saying you're releasing the video tomorrow. Check. Four, edit the video. So welcome back to the DIY SSG96 project. This week is a bit of a follow up to last week's one where we were taking a look at the makeup and the internals of an actual Novrich SSG96. And this week we have taken it to the range and tested it out to see how it performs in its stock guides. Uh, now word of note, unfortunately this was the only time I could do it because literally as I was doing this range test the owner was driving to pick it up to go play with it. Um, so it wasn't the most ideal conditions, it was a bit windy, um, however to counter that I took my rifle out in the same setup as it was last time and uh, retested it at 40 meters so we could get an idea of uh, what the performance difference was due to the wind. So without further ado, let's hand on over to my previous self out there at the range. Well, hang on, just before we do that, I just want to say if you enjoy the content on this channel and you haven't already, please do consider subscribing and dropping a like and a comment down below. It really does help out the channel. Right, enough of me whoring myself out for likes on the internet. Let's jump on over to my previous self out at the range. Hello and welcome to a lovely bank holiday Friday up here at Gunman Tudman. Uh, this would have been the opening weekend for the site, but due to lockdown changes, uh, we're not going ahead for another couple of weeks. But we're here making sure the site's not being trashed, which unfortunately it has been, annoyingly. Um, and we are also going to be testing this, not the DIY SSG, but the actual Novrich SSG96, which one of you guys has very kindly sent me to test and compare to the rifle I'm building. So, let's just go through, there's some slight subtle changes to the range, because uh, Muggins here was an idiot and forgot the, paper, the cardboard target. So let's walk down and I'll show you what we've got. Also, I'm going to drink my coffee because it's pretty chilly. So, gone is the light stand and the cardboard box target, and instead we have upgraded to the Mighty 2 oil drum method. See, you can actually get a good size, a good ratio of player size because uh, this is the same height as me and uh, probably a bit skinnier than I am. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. I joke, it's slightly wider, but good size for a player and kit. Then moving on, we have our target at 50 meters on the oil drum face. And we thought we'd also try and put a paper target at the 65 meters to see if we can get groupings on it. And then finally, we're gonna reach out and see if we can pick the 85 meter oil drums. So let's crack on. As before, we're gonna do five round groupings at each of the ranges. Um, the only real difference, other than the rifle, is we're using ASG Accuracy International 0.48 gram BBs. Uh, we moved to this because heavier weight should give us better consistency. This rifle can lift them and uh, my rifle can also lift them now, so why not use the best ammo because that's the best way of improving your performance. It's also quite fitting that these are Accuracy International branded, seeing as the real L96 is made by Accuracy International. I'll take a couple of shots as the wind starts to pick up a bit, just want to see how they affect the flight and then we'll do the grouping at 40 meters. Okay, we're looking good. One more, just to make sure. Yep. Right, let's put five rounds onto the paper. Oh, went too low, hang on. It really didn't. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. 
and five. Right, so we've done the 40 meter test and I've moved the camera downrange over to the 50 meter target. So again, take a couple of shots at the oil drum on the right hand side, just make sure the aim is right and then we'll move on to the paper and put five rounds onto it. So one of the things I will say about the Novrich rifle is it is extremely hard to cock compared to the uh, DIY project that I'm working on. Now, it does have a stronger spring, but it's only 0.3 joules stronger, so I really don't think that would account for how much harder to cock it really is. Um, I mean, the next day and the day after range testing, my, my uh, right arm really, really did ache after I put, you know, kind of 500 rounds through it. Um, and that really hasn't happened before with the, the DIY project. Anyway, back on into the testing. Yeah, right. Let's move on to the paper. Now, I'll let the rifle. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Why did I do six? <laughs> well, anyway, there is a group figure on the paper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've done the 40 and the 50 meter. Uh, both those were done in slightly windy conditions, not too windy, but we had a, a wind coming pretty much straight down range. However, that's completely died now. So hopefully that will improve performance at the 65 meter target. So once again, we've got some oil drums that are just in front of it. I'll take a couple of shots at those to make sure my aim's right, and then we'll move on and see if we can uh, get a grouping on the paper target. And here comes the wind again. move on to the oil drum. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. All right, move the camera again and we're gonna see if we can ping out the oil drums at 85 meters. So I'll take a couple of shots, see if we can get a kind of iron on it and then we'll uh, then we'll count five. Well, that's reaching out, but I think that hit the front one. Let's go up. Two. Cool, right, let's let's do five, see what we do.
one. Two. Three. Four. Five. I'm just going to take a couple more because I think a couple of those went over. We can just watch it back and fish and find out what's what. Six. Seven. Eight. Right, and that's all ammo. So after we finished the 85 meter test, I went up the range and had a look at all the targets to see what kind of groupings we got. Um, and I was a bit disappointed to see we weren't getting five hits on the paper at 40 meters and 50 meters. Now me here thought that that was the rifle not performing well and uh, my initial thought was actually, oh, I changed the ammo, it could be dodgy ammo. So uh, in all fairness to the rifle, I switched back to the point fours I've been using previously with the DIY SSG project. So I switched back to the Jess point fours that I was using previously. We're just gonna see what grouping this gets at 40 meters with these. Obviously I've already uh, run it and set the hop properly before, uh, before filming this. So this is all ready to go. No need for a hop adjust and don't share in the comments. Oh, but your hop's set for four eight. It's not, I've redone it. So let's crack on. Down so I'm going to take two shots low, make sure my aim's right, and then I'll move up to play for target. Cool. Right, going to the play for target. One on the paper. So it's the afternoon now and I've switched over to the DIY SSG. I've uh, set the hop for 4.8 and chronoed it and uh, what I'm noticing is we've got a massive power loss. Uh, I need to talk to some experts about it but my thoughts are that the light piston is flying forward far too fast and uh, is basically finishing its travel before it can impart much energy onto the 4.8. So we're not going to get as big a maximum range but we might as well see what the groove is like. So, load it in and do the 40 meter test. Is that recording? Yep. Once again I'm just going to take a couple of shots below it to uh, make sure my aim's right and then I'll move on to the paper. And onto the paper. One. Two. Three. Ah, I think the wind took that one to the right there. Four. And five. Just a side note on the wind. Uh, 
when I did the Norwich rifle shoot, uh, it was between 15 to 20 mile, uh, kilometers per hour, pretty much straight down range, which meant that gust would affect the hop of the BB, um, but less about the windage. When we shot with the um, DIY SSG, that was in the afternoon, um, and the wind had come round and was coming slightly across the range left to right, as we see some of the BBs that go off to the right, um, and that had picked up to probably between 25 to 30 kph, well, that's for the gusts. So slightly stronger wind for the DIY and slightly less wind for the Novrich rifle, but still not ideal shooting conditions, but the best I had, and it is pretty skirmish representable. I would say you can still skirmish in this weather. Right, so the 4.8s weren't doing all that well in my opinion. So I switched back to 4s and I reset the hop, re zeroed the scope. And we're just going to do another 5 round grouping at 40 metres so we can get a comparison and see uh, whether or not we should run 4.8s in this or whether we should stick with 4s. I'm pretty sure I already know what the uh, answer is going to be there though. So as always I'm going to take a couple of test shots and then we'll move on to the paper. Okay, moving on to the paper. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And I realised I didn't turn the scope cam on. So, uh, oh wait, no I did. I did. We're all good. Whew. I'm very forgetful these days. Luckily I'm not so forgetful as to not remember to do the after shoot analysis. <laughs> so if you haven't watched any of the other range videos in this series, um, I highly recommend checking them out because I explain fully how I do this. But effectively I've digitised all of the hits and then I've gone through the scope cam footage and um, digitise my point of aim effectively relative to the first shot. I always put the first shot in the centre of the target. Um, so we can see how much the error has come from me personally uh, and then how much of it has come from the rifle. Obviously some of it will come from external factors like variance in BB weights or uh, wind gusts and that's an issue here today. Um, but it gives us a good idea. Uh, also note that some of the groupings I have uh, uh, justified down into the so they group around the centre of the target just so it's easier to look at them. And it's not about, well, we weren't necessarily going for positional accuracy because uh, Muggins here didn't set the scopes right. Uh, we're just looking at the raw grouping. So without further ado, let's dive on into the uh, 40 meter with the 4.8 in the Novridge rifle. Right, so we have my point of aim on the left and my point of impact on the right. As we can see, the, the point of aim is fairly well grouped together. And then if we look on the right hand side, we can see the point of impact all five hits uh, were in uh, under an A4 sheet of paper area um, in pretty much the, the area of the target. So that's definitely going to be all five hits on a chest uh, at 40 metres, if not, you know, kind of head size pretty much. So all good there. So looking at the 50 metre target with the four eights, we can see that weirdly enough, the, the vertical spread has decreased. Uh, that's probably due to me shooting through a lull and there not being any gusts because gusts will affect our vertical height. Um, but as we expect, our windage has increased out. Now it's still a very respectable grouping. Um, once justified down onto the target, we can see it's pretty much just over an A4 width. So still, it's going to be all five on a torso without any gear on you. It's going to be a bit hit and miss if you're going for gaps and trying to get smaller parts of players, but still a pretty respectable performance at 50 meters. Now, jumping out to 65 metres, I can't really do a, a point of aim versus point of impact because the point of impact started increasing, uh, but our point of aim was still fairly consistent, quite a nice tight group, only a couple of inches difference in aim point, but our hits just started to spread out quite a bit, mainly in the vertical aspect though, but all five shots landed on the oil drum 
in probably about a meter's height and probably about double an A4 width so you're looking at a player size target still so 65 meters with this rifle in this wind condition you still should be able to engage uh, a full view player and, and hit them fairly reliably. And then finally looking at the 85 meters um, the BBs were pinging out there and hitting the three oil drums that kind of overlapped it is the um, the target cam view is is slightly misleading because that's obviously offset from uh, from the way I'm shooting. So you know I don't accidentally hit my uh, camera down there. But if you look in the scope cam footage, we can quite clearly see that um, the oil drums overlap like so. Uh, and we were putting shots on all three of them. And in fact, some of the shots originally were going over the top and uh, hitting the oil drums further back. So. With that in mind, I think up to 85 meters you might be take two or three shots but be able to hit a player sized target. It's it's certainly slightly more accurate than the DIY is at that range, but then again it does have that bit of extra power so it should be able to reach out. Also, we're running heavier BBs at this range. Um but looking at the playback as well, um if you go back and look at the, the range shots, it was the BBs were losing their momentum quite a lot at 85 meters, so really I don't think the rifle's going to push out much further than that. But then again, how often do you need to make shots beyond 85 meters? I wanted to make sure that it wasn't ammo issues, so I switched back to point fours, reset the hop, and then did a grouping at 40 meters. Now, looking at the point of aim, uh, we can see I'm starting to get a bit tired here <laughs> uh, as it started to spread out a bit. But looking at the point of impacts, we can see that we got a nice grouping of five, all within the square printed target. Admittedly, it was off the target, so justified in, it's pretty much the square. So even with point fours at 40 meters in wind, you should be hitting a player every time. Um, and that's not just a whole player, you should probably be able to get you know part of a player that's sticking out from the side of a building or whatnot. So overall, it's a pretty good performance result. So I went back in the afternoon after handing the Novrich rifle back to Dom, the owner, um, with my DOI SSG. I thought it best to uh, reshoot it uh, on the same day just to try and take conditions mostly into account. Um, but we can see that I was definitely getting very tired at this point as the point of aim has spread out with the uh, 0.48s at 40 metres. Uh, however, the point of impacts um, is a reasonable size grouping if you discount that third shot, which... Uh, I believe got taken by the sideways gust um, slash me probably leaning the rifle because that sailed off to the right and you do get flies occasionally in airsoft so I personally think that that's fine to discount that one so again we're getting a fairly reasonable size group slightly tighter than I believe with the point fours so let's have a look at the point fours because all five of those actually landed on target uh, we can see that my point of aim is is bigger than it was for the Novrich rifles but the performance of the DIY SSG is actually pretty good. Uh, our, our vertical distance is really, really quite small, um, and our windage um, is uh, the same width as the target. So overall, I'm pretty happy with that, and that tallies roughly with how it performed at 40 meters the previous time. So realistically, that means we can now compare the range test that we did last time with the DIY SSG to the Novrich rifle range test that we did this time round. Now, admittedly, they're not exactly the same because the Novrich rifle is using 4.8 and the uh, DIY is using 0.4s. However, at the time, those were the best weights to use for each of the rifles as the, uh, the <laughs> DIY currently loses a lot of power, probably because of the weight of the piston, when using 4.8s. So, this will probably be a separate video as uh, this is quite a long video. Um, we can go through and have a look at those two and see how they compare. But from this range test, what can we conclude? The Novrich rifle is pretty good out of the box and should give you pretty good performance out to, you know, that kind of 50, 65 meter range. And at 85 meters, you're going to hit a target, but it will take you a couple of shots and you do need a bit of holdover. Um, and you can probably push out and actually uh, do suppressive fire at 90, 95, maybe even 100, but you're not going to be hitting people every time. You're going to be, you know, keeping heads down. So overall, pretty good for the Novrich. Is it perfect? No. Is it worth £300? That remains to be seen, because I've still got some budget left to upgrade my rifle a bit more.
So stay tuned to see how that goes. And until then, stay safe and I'll see you all soon. Oh, did you think I'd forgotten the little quiz that I set yesterday? Well, no, no I haven't. So, what were your answers? A, B and C. Which one's which? Which one was my DIY with 0.4s? Which one was a Novich with 0.4s? And which one was a Novich with 0.8s? The answers, the scores on the doors, if you will. A was, in fact, the DIY rifle. B was a Novich with 4.8s. And C was a Novich with 4s. So, if you got that right, give yourself a pat on the back. If you didn't, oh well. Who knows, there's just some dots on pieces of paper. So for real this time, thank you all for watching. I'll see you all soon and stay safe. Whew.